السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعسيري The plan is to talk about the characteristics of the Wali of Allah and obviously the PowerPoint presentation that I made at my university, Mishka University I'm actually going to be presenting a little bit tonight six of the Wali of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now there is one verse in Surah Al-Baqarah which is very very important in terms of how number 74 Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he talks about different types of hearts he talks about the various kinds of hearts now obviously when we learn about hearts and about how our heart functions in biology many of us we have been taught by our teachers and professors that your heart is equivalent to your fist is that correct yes do we have any doctors in the house tonight any doctors the doctor can correct me if i'm wrong inshallah no problem so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he is saying in this verse ثُمَّ قَسَتْ قُلُوبُكُمْ مِنْ بَعْدِ ذَلِكَ فَهِيَ كَالْحِجَارَةِ أَوْ أَشَدُّ قَسْوَةِ That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says that then your hearts become hardened after that, becoming like stones or even harder. Now, the people who have their hearts, which are very hard as a rock or a stone, these are those people upon whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He puts the seal on them. As we say in Urdu, ke unke dil ke upar mohar lag gai hai. Meaning that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sealed their hearts now and they will never ever come to the guidance. As we learn from the seer of our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that it was his uncle Abu Lahab who did not accept Islam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he also revealed down Surah Lahab, which, which is all about Abu Lahab and about how he will be perished and destroyed. Abu Lahab's heart was also sealed. It was also what you would call closed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is why he was not able to accept Islam or to even allow him to listen to the message of Islam. So in this same verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says that, وَإِنَّ مِنَ الْحِجَارَةِ لَمَا يَتَفَجَّرُ مِنْهُ الْأَنْهَارِ That for indeed, there are stones from which rivers burst forth. How many of us in the audience have been to Niagara Falls, New York? Anyone? Alhamdulillah, quite a few. That's good. What is there in Niagara Falls? Before the falls that you see, what is there before it? Can anyone tell me? Let's see if the audience is awake or everyone is sleeping. Yes? There is a lake. Okay. But by the lake, what else is there with the water? I'm talking about the physical characteristics of that area. Rocks. Subhanallah. Mashallah. You got the prize. Alhamdulillah. That is correct. And what else? Rivers burst forth fall and which is why we see the waterfall over there and so in the next portion Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he is saying that and then there are some hearts some of them that split open and then water comes out this is that same example of Niagara Falls and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the end he is saying وَإِنَّ مِنْهَا لَمَا يَهْبِطُ مِنْ Allah is not unaware of what you do. My dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam, our goal in order to become a wali of Allah is that we get to this level of having our hearts which what you would call they fall down for the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That وَإِنَّ مِنْهَا لَمَا يَهْبِطُ مِنْ خَشْيَةِ اللَّهِ That whenever we remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when we start to fall out of our, of our eyes because of the khashiya and mashayim, that He is the guardian of those who believe in Him. And this is especially in uh, Surat, Surat Al-Imran, 
verse number 66, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He ends this verse by saying that, Wallahu waliyul mu'mineen. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is the guardian and protector of those who believe in Him. And the other portion about becoming a wali of Allah is that the wali of Allah is made by doing many voluntary acts doing many what you would call extra ibadat many of us have heard la illallah wa ashhadu anna muhammad rasulullah and i pray the five daily salawat fajr dhuhr asr maghrib isha i soon will enter jannah and so when that person he said okay i'll i'll do whatever is mentioned neither will i increase whatever you have told me and neither will i decrease whatever you have told me and so when that bedouin arab he when he left the masjid the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam sahaba that uh, if that person he stays true to his word, then he will enter Jannah, insha'Allah. Now the question arises: What do what do we as Muslims living in the 21st century derive from this hadith? And what we actually derive from this hadith? is that in this hadith, the Prophet ﷺ, he has outlined the bare minimum in order to enter into Jannah. Obviously, as Alhamdulillah, again, many of us, we also went to school as well. So you know that in school, now, I mean, before it was 50% was the passing points, right? But now they've increased it to 70. If it's below 70, you don't pass that specific test or exam. So consider these five pillars of Islam being a 70 grade, a C grade on your report card of A'mal on the day of Yawmul, on the day of Yawmul Qiyamah. Now obviously, every parent and every child and every student, they want to get the A plus grade. Is that right or wrong? That's right. What happens if our child or if we ourselves, we get a C grade in any test or assignment or exam? We don't feel good, right? Okay, alhamdulillah. So similarly, the wali of Allah, they are those people who are constantly striving, they're constantly working hard so that they're able to get that A plus grade, to get that 100% in their um, uh, account of deeds. And so therefore, the wali of Allah, as I have said earlier, that they work hard on the voluntary acts. How many of us here in the audience have heard the hadith about praying 12 nafil salah in one single day? Has anyone heard about this hadith before? No? Okay. It was actually narrated from one of the Ummahaz al Mu'mineen, where, radiallahu uh, anha, that she narrated that the Prophet وسلم, said that if you pray 12 nafil salah or you pray, you pray the 10, uh, sorry, the 12 sunnah in one day, meaning that you pray the two for fajr, the two rakas sunnah before fajr, then you pray four before dhuhr, that is six, and then after dhuhr you pray another two. Okay, and then if you pray two after Maghrib and you pray two after uh, Isha, so two for Fajr, that's two, and then four uh, before Dhuhr, that's going to be six, and then after Dhuhr you pray another two Rakah Sunnah, that's going to be eight, and then you pray two after Maghrib and you pray two after Isha. Our Prophet وسلم, has promised that person who prays 12 Rakah Sunnah every single day a huge mansion, a huge palace in Jannah. And so, the Ummahat al-Mu'mineen who narrated that hadith, she said that after I heard about this hadith, about this saying of the Prophet ﷺ, about praying 12 sunnah in one day, she never ever left praying those 12 sunnah. And subhanAllah, many of the uh, women folk, also some of the men, uh, similarly, they also love to have a nice house, a big mansion, you want a swimming pool, you want this, you want nice basement. So this is an easy way to get a nice mansion in Jannah. So now moving forward to the next point, which is that the other way that a wali of Allah is made is through strong belief in Allah and His religion. That the wali of Allah, their iman, their faith, doesn't shake away. It's not something which you can convince them by talking to them and they'll say, you know what, yeah, I don't really think that Islam is true or I don't really think our rituals are right or this or that. A wali of Allah knows 
that his religion is true and he knows that his Rabb is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the other point is that the Wali of Allah will always follow the right path and also the right teachings of Islam. You can do a very simple litmus test on a Wali of Allah by asking them about anything which is halal or haram in Islam. And then that person, you will, you will come to know how that person is a Wali of Allah if he chooses the halal option in that scenario. So when we go to the next point, there is a very beautiful hadith regarding the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his Wali. And so in this hadith, our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa he said, So, an an Abu, Abu, Abi Hurayra radiallahu anhu qal, qal Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, inna Allah ta'ala qala man aadili waliyan faqad aadhantuhu bil harb, wa ma taqarraba ilayya abdi bi shay'in ahabba ilayya mimma afraduhu alayhi, wa la yazalu abdi yataqarrabu ila, ilayya bin nawafil. Now obviously this hadith is uh, more longer, so I'm just going to at least summarize and paraphrase what is mentioned here. So on the authority of Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that Allah the Almighty has said, whoever has mutual animosity with a friend of mine, meaning that if there is a wali of Allah and someone has their hatred, someone has their different type of what you would call like a grudge or jealousy against that person who is a wali of Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that I declare war upon that person and my servant does not draw near to me with anything more beloved than the religious duties that I have imposed upon him. Meaning that the wali of Allah, they always make sure to fulfill the obligatory actions of Islam as well as doing different types of nafil as well. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this hadith that is being narrated by even by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is saying that, that I have imposed upon him and my servant continues to, try to draw near to me with the uh, what you would call the nafila acts, the uh, uh, what is known as the optional actions, the nafil, such that I love him. And when I love him, I am his hearing with which he hears, his seeing with which he sees, his hand with which he strikes, and his legs with which he walks. Were he to ask me about anything, I would surely give him. And were he to ask me for refuge, I would surely grant him. This hadith is actually recorded by Sahih al-Bukhari. Now, first off, right off the bat, we need to analyze this hadith in a critical mindset by understanding that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, through the words of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa is saying that, that when I love him, I am his hearing and his seeing and this and that, it does not mean that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala physically comes down into us. This is not the uh, correct, what you would call uh, theology in this portion. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that he comes down, he basically becomes in, in that person by making him doing a lot of good deeds. That that person, whenever he sees something, such as for example, instead of looking at a different magazine, he doesn't look at that and he reads the Quran. And for example, if he wants to listen to something, he doesn't listen to any music, rather he's listening to some Quran or some other thing or some lecture or something of that nature. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that when his hand, with his hand which he strikes. So when his hand is as, if it's being used in the right way, then he is doing different types of khayr. Meaning that if he is striking something, he is pl trying to plant a tree which will benefit the community. Because obviously the shade of that tree will benefit the people. And also besides that, that his legs which, with, with, uh, which the legs walk away. Now those legs, they're not going to be going to some haram place, rather they're going to be coming to a halal place which would be a masjid or some other place or something of that nature. And again, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentions about that if that person were to ask me about anything, that if that person, when we talk about that, uh, in سَأَلْنِي لَأَعْطِيَنَّو That if he asks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for anything, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to give that person whatever he asks for. And وَلَا إِسْتَعَاذَنِي بِي وَلَا إِسْتَعَاذَنِي لَأُعِيذَنَّهُ That if he asks for refuge from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will also give that to him. 
Now, the lesson that we learn here is in order to become a wali of Allah, one must fulfill all of the obligatory acts as well as do as many voluntary acts as possible. The third lesson is that when Allah loves someone, especially his wali, then he becomes their seeing, their hands and their legs and their, and their uh, hearing in order to do the good deeds constantly. Because as many of us are aware, there are some types of Muslims who are only what you would call seasonal Muslims. Now again, I don't have anything against them. I'm just letting you know about this concept that you see them only in the month of Ramadan and besides Ramadan, you, you don't see them. Over here, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that these wali of Allah, the true wali of Allah, they do their good deeds constantly throughout the year. That 11 months of the year, they're doing it constantly. But when the month of Ramadan comes, they increase it significantly. They are doing extra nawafil, they're giving more money in sadaqah, they're beating everyone in the community by giving money after money, a lot of money. And they're also making sure that they're doing some type of iftar. So that because as the Prophet ﷺ, he said that if one person, if he uh, makes someone else break their fast with them, then he gets the reward of that same person of uh, basically fasting for that whole day. So the true wali of Allah, they don't hold back from doing any of the good deeds which are mentioned. Which is why these wali of Allah, they're also known to finish reading the Qur'an a lot of times. They do it three times, five times, maybe ten times in the month of Ramadan. Because they're constantly working hard. And again, many of our youngsters, they look up to these athletes. If you learn about their, the athlete's schedule and routine, they are constantly working hard. They have workout session, training session, this session, that session. They don't have a lot of free time, which they usually waste and squander away. Which is why they are at the top and they are who they are. Similarly, the wali of Allah, they don't waste their time. Whatever time they have, they use it for the uh, remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they use it so that they are able to work harder and to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He also says that He will grant whatever the wali asks, ask him for, asks him for and he would also grant refuge if that wali asks for it. Now over here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He always will bless His wali with different bounties and ni'mas. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, such as for example, if a wali of Allah, let's say for example, he is, he is desiring for a specific type of food or if he's desiring for a specific type of anything, anything that comes to your mind. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant it to him just because of his love for that wali of Allah. And inshallah, I'll be finishing with uh, this quote, which is actually from uh, Hazrat Umar ibn Khattar radiallahu an, which is that, to speak less is wisdom, to eat less is healthy, and to mingle less with the people is safe and serene. Now obviously when a person hears this quote for the first time, they're like, I don't have to talk, I don't have to eat, and I don't have to meet with people. That pretty much means that I'm just living in my own house or living in my own bedroom, and I'm just worshipping Allah constantly. The thing is over here, we're, we are talking about excess talking. As we might know some people who are known to talk a lot, talk a lot, talk a lot. Uh, obviously their kiram and katibin are very busy in writing whatever they're saying from their words, from their mouth. And when it talks about eating less is healthy, we come to know from different types of research, especially uh, in the month of Ramadan, that when we eat less, it is actually good for our body. Because obviously it is able to release all the toxins from our body and it's able to purify the whole uh, digestive system and everything becomes much better. And to mingle less with the people is safe and serene. Why is it safe and serene? It's because not just that it allows us to have more time to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and also be in His ubudiyah, but when you are when you're spending less time with people, there is also a lesser chance for you to say something or maybe do something which may hurt that person. Because also the wali of Allah, they are also the best people in their character, in their akhlaq. And when it comes to the character, our Prophet ﷺ said in a very beautiful hadith, 
that خيركم خيركم لأهله وأنا خيركم لأهله that the best of you are the best who are to their family and their wives meaning that the Prophet ﷺ said that the best of you are not those who when they come to the masjid they meet with everyone Assalamu alaikum hey how are you how's everything and they're very nice with the people here but when they go back home they basically are like a dictator that when when the children or when the wife comes to know that oh my husband or the father is here okay just go just go go back to sleep or just do whatever you want just do just do the homework do this do that this is not the attitude for you this should be the true character of not just a husband or a father but also of a wali of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and so inshallah we'll talk about the tips on becoming the wali of Allah next Saturday inshallah which is also the finale the last uh, lecture series of uh, this uh, part inshallah and so we'll talk about what things what uh, which which we should do in order to become a wali of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So inshallah we'll conclude with dua. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nasaghfiruka wa natumu ilayk. Allahumma anta salam wa minka salam tabarakta ya thal jalani wa ikram. Allahumma a'inna ala dhikrika wa shukrika wa usna ibadatik. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fila akhirati hasana wa kina adhaab anna. Rabbana taqabbal minna innaka anta al-sami'u al-alim. Wa tuba alayna innaka anta al-tawabu al-rahim. Allahumma ahdina li ahsan al-akhlaq la yahdi لأحسنها إلا أنت لا يهدينها إلا أحسنها إلا أنت برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم جعل جمعنا جمعا مرحوما وجعل تفرقنا بعده تفرقا معصوما وجعل فينا ولا معنا شقيا ولا محروما اللهم إنا نعوذ برضاك من سخطك وبمعافاتك من عقوبتك وبك منك لا نحصي ثناء عليك أنت كما أثنيت على نفسك سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين وصل اللهم صل على محمد محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته